So now here comes the next part of the question. This is now where we not only just use acceleration, but now we use kinematics. So if I'm initially at rest, what will be my velocity after traveling a distance of two kilometers? So if you think about this now, because I'm accelerating, I need some equations of accelerated motion. Um, and so if you look at uh, different equations for accelerated motion, turns out, uh, well, what I like to do, I don't know if you remember me doing this before, but I like to write down what everything actually means. So u is the initial speed, v is the final speed, a is the acceleration, s is the distance or the displacement, and t is the time elapsed. So I like to write this, and I call this uvast. So that way then I can write, well, what's my initial speed? Initial speed, well, if I'm initially at rest, that's zero. What's my final speed? Oh, that's what I'm looking for, so I'm going to put a star there. That's what I want. What's my acceleration? Well, I found that. It's 0 0.2. And because it's got proper units, I'm just going to be sloppy here and not put in the units. And I know that it's to the right. What's my displacement? That's how far I've traveled. Well, I've traveled a distance of two kilometers. So should I just put a two in here? Nope, not at all. I should not do that. I should, uh, by the way, the way I said nope reminds me of these uh, silly commercials for Chuck Testa. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but uh, yeah, maybe you should check it out. It's actually pretty funny videos. But um, okay, so my displacement is not two meters, it's two kilometers. And two kilometers is 2,000 meters. We should always put uh, regular units in here. My time, well, I don't know the time and I hopefully don't care. So I can look at my four equations of motion and try to find one that avoids a t. If you look carefully for the four equations of accelerated motion, you'll see this one. But there's v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So if I use that one, well, my initial speed is zero, so that cancels out. And actually, I want v, so that's actually really easy. I don't have much algebra to do at all. I can just say v is technically plus or minus the square root of 2as. But I'm going to knock out the negative one because I am I know that my speed has to be in the same direction as my acceleration. Since the acceleration is to the right, I've decided to call that positive. So I'm just going to say, therefore, that v is going to be just the positive square root of 2 times my acceleration, which is 0 0.2, times my displacement, which is 2,000. Well, what this does then is 0.2 times 2,000 is 200. 200 times 2 is, what would that be, 400? No, what would that be? 0.2. Well, actually, you know what? Let's actually just figure it out. So if I go ahead and try to calculate this, it's not going to work out very nicely. I was just trying to see if it worked out to be a nice answer, but actually it doesn't. That's where I was going with my head here. So 2,000 times 0.2 times 2. I'm just going to figure out that thing within the square root here. And then I just want to take the square root of that answer. That'll give me... Okay, so 28.28427 da, 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 units. But the thing is, I want to use the right amount of significant figures here. So because I have two significant figures here, and I have, well, actually, I meant it to be two, so I should have said 5.0. I meant to use two significant figures everywhere. So I meant to say 5.0, you know, 20, 75, 2.0. And let's assume that we're just using two significant figures everywhere. Well, then I would have an answer then of approximately, um, well, I could round that then to around 29 meters per second. I put the little dot on the equal sign, remember, because it's not exactly equal to 29. It's roughly 29 meters per second. And so if you're not sure, well, how fast is that really? Um, you could always convert that to kilometers per hour if you felt like it. That's always a fun uh, little thing to try to do. So. Let's just say I want 25 meters, and I'm going to put the seconds on the bottom. My whole goal then is to use uh, either things on the top or the bottom to cancel out the things I don't want. I don't want meters, I want kilometers. And I don't want seconds, I want hours. So I want to get rid of the meters, so I'm going to put something with meters on the bottom and kilometers on the top. And do I know any things like how many kilometers in a meter or how many meters in a kilometer? I sure do. I know that one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So if I did it just like this, if I just did 29 times 1 divided by 
1000, I would end up having my answer in, well, let's see, the meters cancel out, it's the top and the bottom. So I'd have my answer in kilometers per second. But I don't want kilometers per second, I want kilometers per hour. How do I do that? Well, I've got to get rid of my seconds. So I'm going to put something with seconds on the top and hours on the bottom. I know that there's 60 seconds in a one minute, and there's 60 minutes in one hour, so 60 times 60 is 3,600. So then I know that there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. It turns out if I do it like that, the seconds cancel out. So 29 times 1 times 3,600, all that divided by 1,000. And what a lot of people sort of end up memorizing, at least, is that, well, you always end up having this number of 3.6. If you look, 3,600 divided by 1,000 is 3.6. So for people who've done a lot of this stuff, they end up knowing that you either multiply by 3.6 or divide by 3.6. But see, it didn't just come from nowhere. This is where it came from, in case you forgot. So we can always do that. So let's take 29 and we'll multiply it by 3.6. And we'll figure out then... Um, how many kilometers per hour that is. So if I go over here, so that means 29 times 3.6. So that's around 100 kilometers an hour. So that is actually pretty darn fast. I mean, at least if you're uh, used to this sort of thing, I mean, that's sort of highway driving speeds. Now, that's maybe not so realistic. And the reason why this isn't realistic, well, my example is quite ridiculous for starters. Why would a velociraptor be pulling on me? Um, it's not Jurassic Park here. We don't live with the velociraptors. But even if I was, there would be other factors here as well. So, I mean, obviously, friction would be pretty serious force here. That means I'd actually be really heating up. If I was being dragged on the ground that fast, I'd probably have some sort of wear and tear on my body. That wouldn't be very fun. But uh, we're also assuming no air resistance so we're assuming a lot of other things. But you can see the idea. We can solve for just about anything. So as long as you have an unbalanced force, you'll cause an acceleration. That acceleration then can be used in order to calculate all sorts of stuff, like how long does it take to travel somewhere, or how fast are you going, um, how far will you travel in a certain time. So you can use these examples from kinematics, you know, from these equations of uniformly accelerated motion which this is, right? This is a constant acceleration. That's why it's uniform. So you can use those equations of uniformly accelerated motion to solve all sorts of awesome things. So that's the key behind Newton's second law. Very useful for us to figure out how things end up moving due to unbalanced forces.